Welcome to the finals of YCS Who Gives a Heck, where the fate of these two duelists is about to be decided. Player A rolls an 11, player B, he rolls a 6, so player A will start, and looks like he has something. He activates Brilliant Fusion, wow, player A opens up with Brilliant Fusion, but player B, wow, he counters with the maxi, but player A is thinking, he is thinking long and hard, and he's got the Gamma, wow, he has got the Gamma, but player B is now thinking, he's got Ash Blossom, wow, player B counters with an Ash Blossom, Player A, wow, Player A counters with the game. What are we watching again? I don't know, but it's only part of the problem. You guys so in this video we're obviously going to be talking about extreme force uh, more specifically we're gonna be talking about what kind of an impact or how big of an impact extreme force is gonna have on our current metagame but I'm gonna start this discussion off by stating um, some observations that I've had about um, Yu-Gi-Oh in the past few months like just the metagame and the state of everything in the past few months um, the past few months have really reminded me a lot of duelist Alliance format which is really really refreshing actually I know um, a lot of players didn't like duelist Alliance before Format, but I think for the most part everyone kind of really likes that even though it kind of you know wiped the slate clean um, Introduced uh, pendulums to us and even though it came out with really powerful decks like burning abyss Shadal, yang Zing, I mean all three of those oh and teller knights all four of those decks came out of duelist alliance Duelist alliance debatably is the best set in Yu-Gi-Oh history I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys it's the best set because I mean what do I know? I mean, I, I, I have an opinion that it's one of the best but I mean other people might consider it one of the worst It just depends on you know your viewpoint Points. I view a Duelist Alliance as being a huge turning point in the game and as um, introducing us to one of the, um, you know, or, or driving us, like pushing us in to one of the funnest and most diverse uh, formats ever. I mean, we had all kinds of rogue decks, but we also had all kinds of, you know, established meta decks um, when Duelist Alliance came out. I mean, the one, those meta decks I'm talking about, you know, the ones I'm referring to are the ones I was talking about a second ago. I mean, the obvious ones, Shadal, uh, Burning Abyss, Teller Knight, those were, uh, Yang Zing, those were the best best decks that came out and they uh, maintained their status until uh, new challengers and like new challengers came out uh, you know Cle introduced us to Cleefort Cleefort you know another fantastic deck but um, nothing really changed though Cleefort was introduced to the mix but like the core best decks still you know maintained their uh, their status I mean it was like this constant war over what was the best but we still had a lot of rogue running around at the same time like in the mix of all that we still had a lot of rogue we still had gear gear stuff running around we still had had, you know, some hat shenanigans initially. We still had, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. We had Evil Swarm stuff. I saw, you know, Evil Swarm's top out of nowhere, you know, a Duelist Lions format. Like, the format was just very, very diverse, and it really reminds me of what is going on now. We actually have a lot of variety right now. We have, I mean, Spirals, you know, being fleshed out as the best deck, uh, very similar to when Duelist Lions, like, first, like, right, right when Duelist Lions came out, should always were the best deck. And then, uh, you know, then after, you know, New Challengers, it was debatably burning abyss and then so on um that's kind of what we have going on now in in kind of a way because like i said a second ago we have spirals fleshed out as the best deck but we also have pendulums which are debatably the second best i mean it depends on who you ask and you know what the build is and stuff but you know pendulums are a really good deck a paleo is still a really good deck um you know draco shenanigans you know like true draco shenanigans still a pretty decent deck the point i'm trying to make here is besides the hand traps i mean the format is pretty um diversified i mean we have a lot of you know tier one decks to choose from but we also have a lot of rogue to choose from for for example i play i play heralds and heralds w wins me a lot of games catches a lot of people off guard and it's because if you make the right card choices and everything i mean and that goes for like any rogue deck if you make all the right card choices uh, you can do well you can do well playing rogue at regionals and stuff are you gonna win like place first place at a ycs no but can you compete like can you get like top 32 or something oh yeah absolutely so really to make a long story short why i'm comparing the two formats you know, the past few months to Duelist Alliance format is just the sheer amount of rogue and stuff and just the fact that uh, Code of the Duelist really pushed us into a new era of Yu-Gi-Oh! similar to Duelist Alliance. Duelist Alliance introduced us to Pendulums and introduced us and gave us Odd Eyes, Pendulum Dragon and stuff. Then we have Code of the Duelist, which gave us, you know, Firewall Dragon. I mean, the, the comparisons, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh history repeats itself a lot more often than you would think. And moving on with the video here, I'm going to quote myself from an earlier video really quick. So I'm really excited for this card. I'm really excited to see what else comes out in Extreme Force because I think Extreme Force is going to be a lot like Secrets of Eternity because Yu-Gi-Oh! History kind of repeats itself. I mean, we have a green box set, yellow box set, red box set. I mean, Duelist Alliance, uh, New Challengers, and then Secrets of Eternity. It's very similar to now where we have, you know, Code of the Duelist, then Circuit Break, and then, you know, we're going to have Extreme Force next. And if History will repeat itself, we're going to see a lot of miscellaneous support for a 
lot of different archetypes come out of Extreme Force. It pays off to be Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus, guys. You can predict the future and shit. Because Extreme Force comes out with Cleefort Genius and the new Light Sworn Link monster, you know, etc, etc. Um, very similar to Secrets of Eternity back in the day. Secrets of Eternity was kind of, um, just like this wide support set. I mean, it came out with new archetypes like Infernoids, for example. I think Infernoids, that was their first set with Secrets of Eternity, I'm pretty sure. But it also came out with, you know, Cleefort Monolith, uh, you know, in support for, you know, the Tier 1 decks. But it also came out with a lot of rogue stuff, like Unizombie is a great example. Unizombie is a card that came out of Secrets of Eternity that really went to, you know, spark and fuel a lot of rogue decks. There was a lot of cool synchro decks and zombie decks and all kinds of stuff that, that have come out, you know, just because of Unizombie being a card. And it's a great card at that. And Extreme Force is very, very similar because, I mean, just off the top of my head here, Cleefort Genius, like I said a minute ago, is coming out in this set. And Cleefort Genius is, is rogue. I mean, it's going to help out uh, Cyber Dragon. It's going to help out Cleefort. It's going to help out, you know, just, I mean, pick your machine deck. It takes two machines to make. I mean, it's, it's a really good card in machine decks. I mean, it's just right there. That's just one example. I mean, the Light Sworn card. I mean, just pick whatever card you want out of the set. I don't care. There's a lot of rogue stuff in here. That's my point, okay? The set similarities are really uncanny, guys. I mean, like I said a minute ago, Yu-Gi-Oh! History does repeat itself. Like we got a Cleefort Monolith in Secrets of Eternity, we have Electromite in Extreme Force. And Electromite, guys, it might send Pendulum Magicians over the edge, making them a tier one com a contender right next to spirals. And I'm not limiting this discussion just to Pendulum Magicians. I will say Pendulum Magicians are the best, they're the most consistent and everything, and can play hand traps the best, which is a huge part of the format. It's a huge part of the format. So um, them getting that support, being a really consistent deck, and then being Pendulums already, I mean, they inherently float. Pendulum Monsters all inherently float because they go to the extra deck. So as long as you have a scale, you have repeating resources. It's just like playing Burning Abyss or any other, you know, deck where something hits the graveyard and comes out. It's very similar except, you know, everything floats and you don't have to meet requirements except for having a scale. Well, and of course, extra deck zones opened up so you can pendulum summon onto the field from the extra deck, but that is where the new Link Monster comes in. And like I said, I'm not going to limit this to just a Pendulum Magicians. I mean, Metal Foes, I mean, just the, the, the monster takes two Pendulum Monsters to make. If every, any and every Pendulum deck is going to benefit from this card, guys. And it gives you a search. The card, the card is good and opens up two zones it's got 1800 attack like the stats aren't too bad the card's really good guys and i really truly feel like with the consistency of pendulum magicians or or just or with just um how pendulums can really you know mesh together and accomplish things and do things I mean, we very, very might well see some sort of um, Pepe style, you know, really strong turn one deck come out of this support and stuff. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not like we have three Gofus, which are one card, you know, uh, one card link monsters, but they can play Gofu. The, the, I mean, they can play hand traps. I just feel like all around, Pendulum Magicians just might, they might do it, guys. I, th I feel like Pendulums, Pendulum Magicians, I know, I know, I think they might do it. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I've seen the stuff that Pendulums can do. I've seen the, the boards that Pendulums can make. I feel like they have a little bit of a problem with evenly matched, um, but I feel like that for the most part, they're better than Spirals. I mean, Spirals have better removal. I mean, but, but Pendulum Magicians can like, they have better, you know, attack manipulation and stuff to be able to, you know, get over things during the battle phase and stuff. I have no idea what is going to rise up to be the next, you know, best deck or if we're going to have a two deck format maybe maybe it's going to be pendulums and spirals maybe it'll be uh, spirals and some sort of invoke shenanigans like you can't 100% predict a format or anything guys because I mean even down to card choices and stuff it varies so much like if you compare what cards people are playing week one of a format or week 12 of a format I mean it doesn't really matter I mean the point is the card choices are going to be way different sets have come out in, in that point of time um, you know new cards have been discovered in that point of time new strategies have been discovered in, in that in that time frame so you can see how it's it's really hard to actually predict what cards people are going to be playing or what's going to be a really good deck what's going to be the best deck but even though i can't 100 percent say definitively what decks are going to be the best or what's going to happen i can say that i strongly feel like uh pendulum magicians i mean obviously by this discussion i think you guys can tell i i strongly feel like pendulum magicians 
have a huge chance of over you know of overwhelming spirals uh, we, we just we just have to wait and see what happens spirals are a fantastic deck spirals might overpower uh, pendulum magicians they might be able to see pendulum magicians coming and everyone just changes I mean every, maybe people start main decking I don't know anti-spell fragrance I don't know what's gonna happen and that's the point guys all I can do is kind of guess right now and I feel like Electromite sins I've seen I've seen what that deck can do guys it's it's pretty good but moving on with the discussion here guys let's not discredit all all the rogue and other decks that are out right now because I mean Paleozoics I mean you guys you got I mean I poked I poked fun at Heytrunade too okay the card's name is really bad it's really dumb but like is Heytrunade is everyone gonna start playing Heytrunade you know just to try to counter Paleo Frog no or, or is everyone gonna start playing Heytrunade because you know people are worried about set 5 decks in general not really I don't feel like cards like Heytrunade in this example are gonna have their time in the sun right now I feel like they'll have their time you know I mean Heytrunade's gonna have a format where it's really good I just don't feel like it's right now but I, but once again I could be wrong about that too because next month or two months from now who knows maybe we're setting five traps again no idea I just feel like rogue decks I mean if you play the right hand traps and stuff and you make the right card choices still do have a very valid chance a very good chance of winning I mean uh, paleo is a really good example true Draco I said earlier true Draco masterpiece is still a card guys masterpiece is still a fantastic card it's, it's a freaking debatably better towers it's, it's just a really good card if there's one thing that you don't need to underestimate it's rogue decks that play traps because if they consistently win that die roll against you you're gonna lose because I mean if you're playing I mean since I mentioned anti-spell earlier uh, just random example um, if you are playing um, you know some sort of paleo deck for example or true Draco deck it doesn't matter I um, mean you flip that anti-spell fragrance against a pendulum player I mean then you go first what are they gonna do? I mean, they, I mean, you main deck that card, they're screwed. So don't underestimate the die roll, but don't underestimate random shenanigans either, because I mean, just like random synchro decks, I mean, like dark synchro and stuff, they can make somewhat of an impact. They can make a splash of events, guys. Don't underestimate random crap that people can think of either, because who knows what kind of, you know, meshed together invoked deck that someone can come up with that'll be really good. And you guys might think I'm crazy right now. Oh, Rogue can't top, spirals are too good. I mean, no, none of this can do well. Well, I mean, I I have top rogue decks on my channel, guys. When I was down in Louisiana for a regional, a friend of a friend um, actually topped with Gradles. You guys saw that on the channel. I got his deck profile. He's a really cool dude. His name actually was Chad, too. <laughs> it's really funny. Don't take any format predictions to heart, guys, because, I mean, they will have they will make you a negative towards your own deck. They'll make you view the game as negative and stuff. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll see you, they'll make you view the game in a negative light, and that's not, that's not right, guys, because if you make good card choices and if you play well, I mean, you, good things come to those who work at it, right? If you work, hard work pays off, okay? Hard work really does pay off if you make the right card choices and you study the format and you practice other decks and you really want to win playing Rogue, you will win playing Rogue. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today is just some optimism, some hope, and some, some encouragement. And it's, it's a lot of what I need to. I need to practice because I suck. Subscribe! <laughs>